My name is Scott Werner. My name is Ruth Werner. I grew up in Miami, Florida. Ruth grew up in Guatemala City, and we've lived in Colorado for nearly 20 years. I have uh, two kids of my own, and uh, we have a blended family, uh, so we have a total of five. By my first marriage, I have Andrew, Shay, and Brooke, whose mother passed away in 1999, so for many years I was a single parent. When I met Ruth in 2004, Ruth was the mother of Carlos, who was four at the time. And then today we have Valentina, who is six. So growing up, I always thought about marrying my perfect men. Um, I grew up in a Christian family, and uh, I looked up to my dad. Uh, he was a pastor, and I always dreamed about marrying a great man like him. I had the privilege of serving in a university as a university pastor. And in 2004, I served as an advisor on a mission team to Guatemala. My teenage daughter and I stayed together with one of the families in the church, and that was a mother and father and six young adult children, which included Ruth, who was the oldest daughter, and her son, Carlos, who was four at the time. They were doing different um, missionary works at the city and our church and um, we offer our home as a part of uh, you know whoever wanted to come and join us and be uh, at our home for you know a few days and Scott and his daughter Shay came to our home and that's how we met. <laughs> Yeah, it was awesome. It wasn't on that trip that I did anything with my impression, but some months later I made a second trip back to Guatemala specifically to ask Ruth and then to ask her parents if she was interested in beginning to communicate. That was the f second of many trips to Guatemala over the next couple of years that subsequently led to our courtship and to our marriage. I was really excited when I uh, thought about the idea of marrying Scott. And um, there was just one thing that I thought that um, kind of made me think twice, I guess, and it was because uh, he was living in a different country. Uh, but the idea of moving to a different country, it was kind of exciting at the same time. Um, so my wedding day was beautiful. Um, I think uh, we planned for a long time, you know, that day I was excited. Um, we had all our friends and family. Uh, Scott's family flew to Guatemala. So it was a beautiful wedding. Uh, it was a big wedding. It was something different for Scott and the whole family uh, because we married on Sunday and it was during our service at church. So it was uh, something very different for them, but um, that's what all I always wanted. Uh, you know, just marrying at my church with my pastor, my friends at church. Um, so it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. At the end of our honeymoon, she said to me, I'll never forget, she said she was the happiest woman in the world. However, we had to wait four months for visas to be approved for her and Carlos. And quickly, there was vapors or strange indicators that something was afoot, something was going on, something wasn't right. She went quickly from being the happiest woman in the world to being very confused and subsequently distant, closed off. This first year was very hard for me, uh, you know, obviously not being with him and not being able to come to the U.S. with him. And while I was in Guatemala, I met another person and um, this is what made, um, I guess, the this year of 
not being together more difficult. Um, it just meant that, you know, by the time that I was supposed to come to the, the U.S., I didn't want to come. I wanted to stay in Guatemala. It was 11 months after our marriage that eventually she did immigrate. And I would describe that 11th month waiting period not as a stand, but more as a kneel. For me, being in that time where I wasn't sure about um, my decision of marrying Scott was the best. And again, at the same time, being in love with another person, um, I think I always had in my heart and in my mind that I was doing something wrong, that there was something wrong going on because I um, marry a great man and um, I couldn't love him. Uh, so for me, it was very difficult. It was very hard being in the situation of uh, knowing that I was doing something wrong, uh, but not wanting to be uh, with my husband. And so one particular uh, night, about uh, 13 months into our marriage, I said, this is critical. I need to know, I can handle it. Just tell the truth, is, is there someone else? And she confessed the truth. I didn't want to know details, I just wanted to know the truth. It was some months, some months later until it was finally, finally over. Just fast forwarding, I can tell you that in the seven years of our marriage, the first seven years, the first six years, I often felt, not through her words, but through attitude, through emotion, I often felt like my wife wished that she had married someone else. It's a terrible, terrible feeling, but you know, we're together, but it was more of a have to together. Fast forwarding to year seven, uh, we were doing, I thought, better. And then one Christmas, December the 26th of the seventh year of our marriage, I remember it very clearly. It was like the switch was flipped. And I saw the coldness and the closed offness that I had seen back early in our marriage, shortly after our honeymoon. And I immediately was suspicious. I gave her a few days and then I confronted her and said, something is up. Tell me, tell me what's going on here. And of course, you know, she denied. On May the 20th of 2012, just before our seventh anniversary, I approached her knowing that she was in the process of pulling away and figuring out what she wanted to do going forward. And I did what Marriage Helper does not recommend. I gave what would be known as an ultimatum. And I said, you know, you can be married or you can have a boyfriend, but you can't do both. You get to decide. And to my utter dismay, she, uh, on June the 1st, moved out. By this time now, we're seven years later, there's all of this resource available on the internet. So at nighttime when I can't sleep, I'm Googling marriage help and uh, marriage restoration. Like many people, I came across this white-haired gentleman with this soothing voice who seemed to have an approach that really understood the dynamics. So the first time I heard about uh, Marriage Helper was in 2014. That was a little bit, uh, it was the same month that we got divorced with Scott. Uh, so he was looking into Marriage Helper and he asked me if I would go with him. Um, and my response was, um, yes, I'll go with you if you sign the divorce papers. So that was in my mind already. So we attended Marriage Helper for the first time in 2014. And because of 
the place I was, I honestly don't remember much about what they said, what we talked about. But one thing I do remember was that um, I felt respected from all this stuff. So every time I uh, thought about marriage helper, I thought um, how well I was treated in those days when I was there. So I was so committed to this three out of four thing. They say three out of four couples that come to the workshop decide to save their marriage. I'm going, yeah, the odds are in our favor. And it didn't work for us. Every time Scott asked me, what would it take for us to reconcile? I always told him a miracle. Ruth said to me, I know what you want. I don't want to hurt you but I just don't see any way for that to happen. It would take a miracle. We were separated with Scott in 2014, um, legally divorced. So we signed papers, but we were separated since 2012, I believe. Um, so it was a few years, um, you know, that we were not together with Scott. I met someone else, not the same person uh, that I met, you know, when we just got married. Um, I met another person and I got pregnant. On December the 28th of 2015, I received a phone call from Ruth saying that her water had broke and she was going to the hospital to deliver her baby. She invited me to come that evening to the hospital. It was weird. That was one of the, that's probably the weirdest thing that I've ever, weirdest position I've ever been in my life because I'm being invited by my former wife to come to the hospital for the delivery of another man's baby. So the day that Valentina was born, um, his, uh, the bio biological father wasn't there and Scott was there. He was there uh, with me, we prayed, um, and uh, that was part of, you know, that was the beginning of this miracle. Um, after Valentina was born, I went back to my home. Uh, biological father wasn't present in her life. On August the 8th of 2016, now she's eight months old, I got a call at 5 a.m. in the morning. It was Ruth, hysterical. I could only make out three words, baby, fever, pray. I barely spoke to him. I couldn't speak because I was crying. And uh, he asked me, do you want me to come home? And I said, yes, please. So I get to their house at 5.30 in the morning. Valentina has been up all night long with 104.5 uh, temperature. She is on fire, sweating profusely. And I said, before we go to the hospital, can we pray? And Ruth said, yeah, let's pray. I laid hands on her. I'm not a faith healer, but I believe in the power of God. And I prayed a simple prayer out of the Gospel of Luke, and that prayer was, Jesus, just say the word and this child will be healed. Valentina sat down. She stopped crying. I started, you know, feeling her head. She was cold. The fever was gone. And it was a miracle right there. Uh, she was healed. That night, I went back by their place to see how she was. She was perfectly normal. So I said to Ruth, you know what happened this morning? And she said, that was amazing. I said, what happened this morning is you got your miracle. Three weeks later, we began the reconciliation process. A year later, we end up back at the workshop. This time, Ruth's saying, yes, let's do it. I'm willing to go again because I felt respected the first time. The second time was completely different. I was in a different uh, position in that time in our you know, relationship with Scott. And uh, many times during the workshop, I asked Scott, um, did they talk about this last time? 
or was this mentioned last time? Because the first time I honestly don't remember, you know, what happened. She was hearing things like she was hearing it for the first time. So we began then actually as a couple processing and applying the marriage helper principles. A year after that, we came back a third time at Ruth's request because she said, I really, really want to learn this. We came back as a newly engaged couple and remarried on the Sunday of the third workshop that we attended. Now, I can tell you, we're a work in progress for sure. Uh, we have lots of things that we've been growing in uh, over these years. Just a couple weeks ago, Ruth said to me, can we go again? I really, really want to learn more. <laughs> it's working, folks. It's working. I think um, after we went to uh, the workshop, it made such an impact and such a big difference in our marriage that I feel like this second time being married with Scott taught me to um, love and respect him the way I never did when we just got married. And the marriage we have now it's something that I never thought we were going to have. We have a beautiful marriage. And the relationship we have now, I would have never had with him the first time. So all the information I got from the workshop helped me have the marriage I have today with my husband. Valentina, ven. <laughs> this is Valentina, Abigail, 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 and I'm living with my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ruth Werner. My name is Scott Werner, and this is our reconciliation story. <laughs>